Hey kids, welcome back for another episode of Awesome Stuff Badly with me, Uncle Dr. Ernie. We've been doing a lot of infrastructure work over the last couple of episodes, rebuilding the foundations that we're working with, and now we get to start testing! Now, I know a lot of you are thinking, oh no, I hate testing, I hate tests. Those are the bad kind of tests where you have to prove that you know something. Those are annoying, I understand. This is a whole different kind of testing. This is like climbing a mountain just to see if you can. This is like dashing into a burning building to save babies from evil fire-breathing demons. Well, okay, maybe not quite that exciting, but it's where you get to find out what you're made out of. It's putting everything you've learned to the test so that you can grow stronger. And that's what we're gonna do, and it's called test-driven development here. And it's what I've been wanting to do for a while but haven't been able to, and I finally got into such a hole I had to start over again from scratch. So this is so cool that we are going to go ahead and merge this branch. And move forward. Okay. And get branch dash d uh, reset Three branches I got there Take up on that and then I think we can probably join that branch well, let's leave that there for now cross checking Whew. okay uh, what we do now is we're going to create a new branch, check out the test. And what we want to do is, what exactly was it running there? We're gulping by the way at the moment. Oops, a little confused. Okay. So we start our gulp watch. It's gonna load things there. Well, we're all hosed there, though that's understandable because we were doing running tests done. Who the heck is running tests? Because I didn't see it. Is working for active. We're not loading any test suites. Is this is mysterious here? Okay. Oh, right. That is no. That is in the uh, HTML, right? That was just here. Yeah, okay. Fooled me. <laughs> um, we should probably actually invert some of these things here. Don't need quotes in HTML. I don't think great feelings of the language is we just tried to be too text-like, which generated all sorts of confusion. Oh, that's just beautiful. Isn't that just beautiful how it automatically redraws? I mean, this is so worth it. Okay. Now, we actually have to test something. Yay, we get to write code again. And instead of main.coffee where we are grabbing since we are going to start working our way through these and we have a test guide file which is awesome and we will call it
um, let's go to this mirror yes just not going to give me anything at all yep unhappy camper is all right Unhappy camper is great happier so um let's look at that object here and remember how we do our exports simplest way possible and we actually need both don't we Is there any smarter way of handling that? Yes, we pass in our world objects. I think that's what we want to test. So we're going to start just by passing in the templating and the Rx. Wait, do we need Rx? We just need T, right? Yeah. Maybe. Maybe not. Just press on our X, right? X makes a lot more sense. And we can extract it if we need it. Sword test slash test guard. And it's doing something. Okay, that works fine. Any errors? No, no hits, no runs. Nothing. Okay, getting there, that's good. And we are presumably calling. We're not calling. We're not naming our tests cleanly enough. Oh, that's what I'm saying. Oh, that's going to be the problem. Yes. And and Yes! Yay!
Now, I know that doesn't look like a whole lot of excitement here, but this is actually a huge step forward. <laughs> So what we're going to have to do here is figure out how to actually... So there are all these fancy magical doohickeys that ran tests for us. I could not get any of them to work. And I was going completely insane because they used a whole different build system than I was using. And the dependency of the modules were just completely freaking me out. So we're going to do it manually. We're just going to write a bunch of tests and display them on a web page and see if they work. So, to do that, we need to basically start acquiring modules this way. Um, and this is a good chance to really rethink what we're doing in these objects, since I was getting pretty thoroughly confused. And one of the things that was interesting is that we should probably separate God from the world. I know, very deistic, but I prefer to think of it more as kenosis, where you pull the world out of God to create a space that is able to relate to God in some meaningful way. So we are going to go here. Are these synced up, by the way? Almost. Um, more or less like this, right? Where Let's go with that for now. But the world is distinct from God, but it is contained in God. Yeah, yeah, I know. Right. And let's be clear that this really is our global object domain. And what we want to do is actually make Rx part of that. Actually, no. God is simple in this case. We've got a new world, which um, is 
and that root is then we do dot put that stores our rx value and messing that guy around which is nice right so oh and label right and then we want to call Like dot import doc okay. I'm opening a new world. What are we typically doing? Ah, interesting, very, very interesting. This is this is good. Um, interesting question. Do we even need to do it there? Um, I guess this thing the label and the up. Um, so Um, I guess we'll stop there. Thanks, and we'll see.